Hey everybody, welcome back, Alex here. Last week I talked about what tools are not yet quite ready with full native support on the Apple Silicon machines, and this is developer tools. So check out that video, I'll throw a link up here somewhere. One of you commented, Robert, you said, informative video again, although I prefer, is Apple Silicon ready over does it arm? In that video I talked about does it arm? It's a website where you can check whether something is supported or not, uh, different tools for different industries, not just developer tools. And this other tool, is Apple Silicon ready, is something I didn't mention. So why would somebody prefer this tool over the other one? Let's take a look. All right, folks, so if you've been watching any of my videos here, you know that we've been doing some tests on the M1 Mac versus other machines, the Intel Macs and Ryzen machines. PCs and as more software vendors add support for Apple Silicon, they're going to be listed on websites like this. Does it arm is an example that I talked about last week, a really useful tool where you can take a look at the different categories of tools that are available. So they have a categories drop down here and you have developer tools, productivity tools, and so on video and motion tools social communications, entertainment, media apps. So this tool has a lot more different categories that you can look into. But since this is a developer focused channel, we're going to take a look at developer tools. So I'm going to click there. The check mark means that it's fully supported natively. The little star means it's supported under Rosetta. And this symbol, the do not, the don't symbol. What is that symbol called? I don't know. It's the bad symbol. Don't do this. It's it's unsupported. All right. So let's see. Uh, you can just filter things by clicking uh, directly. So if I click on unsupported, you'll see here are the unsupported tools. VirtualBox is unfortunately on that list. So as far as this website goes, I think it has a much simpler search interface and much clearer iconography. Uh, there's only three icons really here that say you're either supported, you're not supported. And then I guess there's this extra one. The fourth icon is this little diamond that says needs info. It has this really interesting tool up here called Apple Silicon app test, you can actually upload a binary, an executable an application from your Mac, and it'll automatically test it for you to see if there is a supported version. Now, right now, uh, the screen that I'm showing, this is on a machine that is not Apple Silicon. This is an old Intel box. I'm gonna test this out anyway, so I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna select an application, and let's uh, let's try Docker right here. This will load the file, and uh, it's not a small binary, so it's gonna take maybe a minute or so to upload and analyze it. That's pretty cool. You can see that you can upload Mac apps directly, zip files, DMGs and PKGs also. And if you're curious about how it works, you can click on this little link right here. Let's take a look while that's uploading. This will get you to yet another YouTube video. Dentures. No, that's an ad. Okay, here is the YouTube video by the creator, Sam Carlton, who created that tool, who will explain how that tool works. And once it's done uploading, you will see total files here and down at the bottom, let's scroll down a little bit here, you'll see Docker and the app that you've uploaded. It says that a native version of this has been reported as a version 3.3.1. If you click on details, you'll see that it's looking at the bundle identifier and that bundle identifier has been known to support Apple Silicon as well, even though the binary I uploaded is not an Apple Silicon version. You can test to see if your app will work or not, even if you don't have Apple Silicon version of it. Now, as far as the cons of this tool, I would say that there's a lot of navigation that has to happen before you get to more information. It's a lot cleaner, it's clear, and everything is very navigable. For example, let's take a look at Eclipse. I will click on details, and then you have um, native support, and then you can drill into further information. There's also related videos down here at the bottom, which is pretty cool. I don't know if it's really a con, not really a con, I guess. But as compared to the other tool, which I'm going to talk about now, is Apple Silicon ready? Now, 
compared to does it arm this tool displays as much information at first glance as possible which is also one of the cons here when i first looked at this tool it was a little bit overwhelming as to what's going on here especially because their icons don't really match so let's say here's an icon they're using this check mark which doesn't match these check marks and also that do not or don't icon doesn't match this icon which i'm guessing is the same thing so let's click on not working and take a look at that list of apps that are not working with the m1 macbook i like the headings here so that's one of the pros on this tool is that the headings change with your filter options and it clearly says what you're looking at so all these are not supported and it says you're not supported via m1 or rosetta and of course there's VirtualBox, right now notice that VirtualBox is listed here, but if we go back to does it arm and I click on unsupported, another very popular virtualization package is VMware. So VMware is actually not listed here on does it arm, but it is listed here. VMware Fusion is listed on is Apple Silicon ready. So you might have a tool that's your favorite to look up this information, but I would say that you should probably use both. Now, what else is great about is Apple Silicon ready? If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, let's go all the way down here. You'll see that you have all these different languages. And this is thanks to people that have been contributing to this tool in different languages. So let's take a look at Russian. Okay, so now it says Spisak Prilajeni Katori Nirabotut Smackbook M1. That means, well, things don't don't work with the M1. So it did keep my filter options and it just switched the language. So in the end, when you're doing your research, you should definitely check out both of these tools. They both have different information on them. Sometimes the information doesn't match. Let's reset this and I'm gonna look for Eclipse. There it is. And you'll see that here on is Apple Silicon ready, we have the version 4.21 listed. You have a direct link to where you can get that version. But if we go to does it arm and let's search for Eclipse here, we have the fact that it's working on Apple Silicon, sure, but it says as of version 4.20. It's reporting a slightly different version. This is probably reporting the current version of the tool. But this one is probably reporting the first version compatible with Apple Silicon. A little bit of a different reporting style that they use. So again, I would check both tools. There you go, folks. Hopefully this was helpful to you. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Stay tuned for more information on the M1 and the development. And hopefully we'll see some new Macs this year. Consider subscribing to the channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.